Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect and After Effects Explained, we're going to be taking a tour through the Simulation Effects folder. These are some of the most powerful and unique effects available in After Effects. So the first one we have is Card Dance. This will allow us to split our image up into different rows and columns, or almost like cards, and animate those cards in different ways. So for example, I'm going to go to Layer, New, Solid, and I'm just going to create a new solid layer and on here, I'm going to add the gradient ramp effect that we showed in our generate video effects episode. And I'll just leave it like this. Just for example, I'll drag that underneath the clip. And on the clip, we can choose the gradient layer to be that black solid. Now let's make sure we have effects and masks chosen. And now under the X, Y, and Z positions, we can drop those down and we can create a little bit of offset on each of those. So I can choose the source of that offset to be anything from the intensity to the red or green blue channels. But if I just choose intensity, you'll see that I can split this shape up now into some rows and columns. So for example, if I was to go to that gradient ramp layer and change it to something like a radial ramp instead, you'll see how the gradient can start to affect the cards just by having different types of gradients. And you can adjust the amount of columns and rows individually, or you can just make them follow each other. So in this way, you can make these cards kind of dance in different ways and shapes that you want. So this tool can get really powerful once you start linking it with expressions and different animations, or you can use it in abstract creative ways and keyframe it back into your original image. Not only can you make these gradient layers the effect, you can also just make other video clip layers the effect. In this case, you'll get a much more random and jittery look. If you want a cool example, I've done a full separate video on making cards react to music if you want to see a, some different ideas. So I'll link you to that video if you want to explore this effect in some other ways. After that, we have Caustics. This one's another really cool one that allows us to create kind of a water ripply effect on our clip. So in the Caustics effect controls, we have a choice between the bottom, the water, and the sky. So for example, if I set the water surface to that black solid layer that we created with the gradient and make sure I choose effects and masks because the gradient ramp is an effect, you'll see the whole clip take on this kind of blue look, which is what I have chosen as the surface color, but you can make it any color you want really. And if I do something like animate this gradient, so let's say I add a wave warp from the distort video effects folder, which we had an episode on as well. If I create this wave warp, which animates through, and I use that as the caustics layer, you see how it's taking that black and white color information and using it to ripple and distort this new image. So you can use it on video clips. You could even use it on text layers or shape layers, allowing you to get different unique results for distorting or rippling intro text or titles like that. And it also lets you choose to use another layer as the bottom or the sky as well to get different reflections and colors into your layer. And you have options on how much distortion that goes, how light or gentle the water acts. Next up, we have CC Ball Action. Now this one just kind of creates a bunch of balls out of your image. If I zoom in real close, you can see it just kind of makes everything into particles up close and you can animate them to make them dance and jumble around and you can also change the spacing and the sizing between the balls. Next up we have CC bubbles. This will create bubbles. In this case since I applied on the layer it's kind of reflecting those orangish colors that were in the layer so you can make them bigger or smaller. That, that looks pretty cool. Made them really big and you'll see the reflection of whatever layer you had inside the bubbles. Another one like that is foam. This one creates kind of bubbles However, in this case, they're generating out of a middle point regardless of your layer. And you can actually make the bubbles be anything you want. So under the rendering section, the bubble texture, you can, they have a bunch of preset ones like Tide or Magma or Wrap. But you can also choose a user defined one and you can create your own bubble. So for example, if I set a shape or another layer as the bubble, then that shape or other PNG or logo or text will emanate 
out of this middle point and it'll act as the bubble. So this is a different one, foam. It's different than the CC bubbles, but similar ideas to them. Going back in order now, we have CC drizzle. This one will act as if raindrops are falling on top of the image. So if you look closely, you can see these raindrops that are animating on top of the image, almost as if we're looking top down like a bird's eye view. Or even if you're just working on solid layers such as this, you can add the bubbles or the drips on top of solid color layers for animation or using them with other layers like we've been doing displacements. And you can choose the amount of ripples on the bubble and how long they last in duration and how often they come. Another one we have is CC hair. This one kind of creates little thin hair fibers out of your image and it kind of bases it based on the contrast in your image. So you can see in this case, it'll look at what's in the, you can kind of see the lines from the original image. If I do it on this tree, you'll kind of be able to see the lines of the tree. And if you don't want to use the original layer, you can choose a different map layer, like a different gradient map layer. And these hairs are transparent. So if you had another layer underneath, you will be able to see that other layer underneath. So you could use something like this to create grass texture if you needed, or maybe even actual hair that you could put on a shape and then put on somewhere where you needed hair texture. There's lots of ideas where you might need some thin texture like this to animate. Next up, we have CC Mr. Mercury, probably one of the coolest ones in here. It'll just make your image kind of flow out like mercury or some sort of liquid metal. And you can adjust all things about it, like the radius, the X and Y positions, so how far it flows. It's just really cool even with the default settings, but you can change the direction. You see the mercury droplets will like melt into each other and they're reflecting the original layer. So if you put them on a different layer, you'll see they reflect that layer. So you have all type of settings on how fast you want them to go, how much gravity pulls on them. They're kind of just generating out of the center. And you can also choose the animation from just explosive or twirly. You have different settings and you can choose the way that they blob in and out. And you can generate them just on gradient layers as well. So don't think you have to do it on a video. You could do like a colored gradient and mix it to make all types of different sort of flowing liquids. Next up we have CC particle systems. This one, again, kind of generates these particles, almost like hair type at first, out of the middle. So they're kind of flowing out like sparks. And you can adjust all types of things about them, such as the birth rate, like how often they're coming out of the middle, the original position, the radius and all that, and also the physics of them. So the gravity, the resistance on them, the way that they come out like twirling or explosive, different types of directions or flowing up like fire. So you can imagine all the different types of times that you might want to make sparks fly out of something. And you can choose the color as well. So if you don't want red suggesting flames, you could do any sort of special color or effect you want. Next up we have particle world. So where the particle systems was 2D, particle world allows you to work in 3D. So I can spin this whole floor around after that, we have CC Pixel Poly. This one we're going to have to animate a little bit to see what happens. But if I change the start time, for example, from zero, and then I move over and I increase it a little bit, you can see that it kind of explodes your image out into these different polygonal shapes. And you can change it from just regular polygons or textured or squares. So you have different options. And you can also change the spacing amount the rotation and just different amounts, but it kind of cracks your image in this way and you can reveal a layer that's behind it or a title or text. Next up we have CC rainfall. So whereas the drizzle was creating distortions kind of flatly on top of our image, the rainfall actually generates rain that drops down. So on this nighttime shot, it can actually look pretty realistic and where it was kind of raining anyway. And I can change the size, the amount of drops and the shape and the, like the gravity of them. 
the amount of wind and the direction. So you can create pretty realistic rain if you needed to add that to your scene. After that, we have CC Scatterize. So this is kind of like the ball action or the pixel poly that we looked at. It allows us to scatter our image out, but in this case, not into balls or anything, just scattering it into pixels. And it also allows us to twist the image. So I can twist all of those scattered pixels right or left. And remember, not only can you do these for video clips, but you could do them for shape or text layers. So you can create cool effects where the text just kind of explodes out into pixels or just wiggles like this. Similar to the rainfall is the snowfall. So again, this time just creating like gentle snow that's falling and it behaves a little bit differently and looks a little differently. But you have all the same options, adjusting the size, the amount of the snow, the color and tint, the opacity, the wind speed and all that. So you can tweak all the settings to try to get some realistic snow for your scene if you needed it. After that, we have CC Starburst. Again, this is another one of those that burst things like the ball action. And these stars will animate out towards you, kind of like we're moving through space. So it will automatically animate out towards you and you can adjust the amount of scatter and the size and speed. So you can see here, if I have the scatter set to nothing, you see how it just constantly zooms in as if we're moving through space. This can be a cool way to create star fields or text titles, or just if you want to generate a star field background. Next up, we have Particle Playground. So this is kind of like the particle world. It generates a large number of particles that we can animate out from the center point. So we can choose all different things about it, like the gravity and the spacing and the size and the amount that's coming out. And we can also not only just use particles and different colored particles, but we can choose different shapes or layers to make the particles. So for example, if I had this PNG of a B shape or whatever else on another layer, and I set the particle layer map to be that shape, now we have a bunch of Bs flowing out of the center and we can animate those in different ways. After that, we have shatter. So this just, again, allows us to kind of break through our image like in some of the previous ones. Now, whenever you see the wireframes like in this and the foam, you can always just choose to view the rendered final image. It just does that to kind of save rendering time. So if I go back to my layer time zero, it'll automatically apply that shatter through. And if I view the final rendered image, you see what happens. And we can change certain settings about it such as the force and the radius of different things. And we have all different types of shatters to go. So like puzzle pieces or whatever. And whatever it shatters into, we can reveal another layer behind. So do it for transitions. You can do this on text. You can do all types of cool 3D shatters with this. And lastly, we have Wave World. This one allows us to create a wave a distortion, kind of like imagine the the drop the drizzle droplets on just one layer. So this is the wireframe, but if I change it back to the height map, we see what it does. It creates differences between black and white contrast, depending on, let's say like the higher it is, the darker or lighter it, it is. And so we can use these as layer masks for other layers. For example, like we had with the caustics effect, if I use the caustics effect on this layer again, just to wrap up this tutorial, and I change the water layer to that clip with the effects for the height map, then I have the information that we created from the wave world being used as the kind of displacement or distortion map for this caustics effect. So you can use it as the, a lot of different type of effects and layers use black and white information for the displacement or layer mask. So it can come in handy for lots of different combinations. So that's a brief tour of everything in the simulation effects folder. In the next episode of the series, we're going to be going over everything in the stylized folder. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, definitely do that so you don't miss any of my new videos. I'm covering all of the effects in Adobe After Effects in this playlist episode by episode. Thank you so much for watching. 
and I'll see you in the next episode.